What's up guys, Ographics in here. Welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to show you the process of requalifying a street directly into Photoshop. No 3D software needed, just our plain image editor. And this workflow allows us to design and come up with solutions not based on imaginary or virtual spaces, but to focus on real situations, on what's actually there on the street or site. This is a really powerful way to take your presentations to the next level. This method is ideal for these urbanism projects and whenever you ain't got no time to model a 3D. The workflow can be applied to any type of project. So let's get started, shall we? Alright, so as I said, this video shows you a process. It took me roughly 2 hours to complete it and it doesn't make sense to post it fully without speeding up. So what I suggest and what I always say during my videos, use the player feature to slow down the video. Then you will be able to see all the steps on normal speed. If you still can't figure out what I did, go ahead and drop a comment down below, I'll be happy to help. Ok, so I'm going to take you with me along the way and pinpoint some essential moves and tips for this type of visualization. Let's get right on then. So the first thing to do is to find your vanishing point. Usually the images from Google Maps have only one, located in the middle. Using a brush, I drew the lines converging to the center to find it. Don't forget that the vanishing point must be aligned with the horizon line, which is where the horizon is, and also where all the heads from people will line up. As you can see, it is good to know the basics of perspective concepts. Then. In a new layer, on top of everything, I painted a dot where the vanishing point is located. This will help us along the way. After that, we can move on to the pavement. For this project, I intended to apply a unified floor throughout the whole street, which allows the pedestrians to feel that they can use not only the sidewalks, but all the street extension. I used some Portuguese stones for that, which is what we already have on the location. This texture is part of the post-production texture pack, released last week. If you guys don't know about that yet, and want to check it out, there will be a link available on the video description. If you're not using any of these textures, just make sure you've got a high quality and seamless image, so that they will stack up. A quick tip about this step is to convert the merged layer into a smart object. This will allow us to go back into the transform box later on if we need to. See, all the elements that we're going to add on this scene will need to be adjusted on its values and colors to match the existing environment. So heads up to that. You can use levels, curves or any of the adjustments up there to get the best result possible. Now with the flooring done, it is now time for the side planes, the walls. Usually for this type of image, you want to have a good base, without too much distraction, so the viewer can focus on the design itself. In this case, I wanted to remove most of the name tags and vandalism. You can do that in many ways, for example with the metal doors, I simply replace the texture. Just don't forget to use a mask to hide unnecessary parts, reapply the shadows and adjust the brightness to make it look right on the scene. Or you could use the clown stamp tool. And lastly, you could also use a brush with a little bit of noise to just paint over. We're not trying to achieve an ultra realistic approach here, so use the tools accordingly. Therefore, a simple brush over was good enough for the result. On the same topic of removing distraction, go ahead and desaturate anything that might draw attention. For example, the sun blind. We now have a pretty solid base. It really looks like a blank canvas, just waiting for the art. So let's move right into it. To be honest, this next step is quite challenging at first, but it is where we can start to really apply our design over the image. We're going to use the vanishing point to draw guidelines of any type of object that we might want to insert. Of course, rectangular ones will be easier. It is just like a normal perspective drawing that we would do on the paper. For example, if you wanted to create an oval shape, you would do inside a box. Alright, we're going to start with the concrete bench. 
Don't forget that you always need to create a new layer to the guidelines. You can actually be a unique one for all the guidelines you will draw on the file, so that later on you can simply hide it to finish the image. There's no right or wrong here. I mean, each person will have their own preference on the workflow, but I like to paint each face of the rectangle in a separate layer, so I have more freedom to edit. Use everything at your hand to create convincing objects. I added a concrete texture on top with a multiply layer mode. I also added shadows and even a white contour to give sharpness to the bench. The subsequent objects follow the same rule as the first one, it's just like normal post-production, you know. But this time we have the aid of perspective guidelines, and we are working on top of a real image. But that's basically the same workflow. That means that every object that you insert should have a proper space scale. You can use windows, people, doors, and other objects that are in the scene and that you know the size to give proper dimensions to what you are inserting. A quick tip to do these straight lines using a brush is to left click once and then with the shift key pressed, left click again on another location. That will create a straight line, just make sure to have your brush with 100% on hardness. Since we don't have the complexity of the 3D software, we can explore much more on unconventional shapes, so I decided to insert this snake. What I'm trying to say here is that, of course a 3D model will make it much more realistic and have a better proportion, but the way I see with this image is that we're trying to convey an idea. If this were to be in fact built, the documentation drawings would be very precise and would guarantee the proper dimensions. So. I feel that in this image we can express ourselves much more loosely. I drew this snake fountain with a mouse, but with a drawing tablet a bet would be much easier. A good idea to express intentions here would be to, for example, draw something by hand on a paper, scan it and drop it on top. I bet the contrast between techniques would be quite interesting to see. So from the start I wanted to turn this street into a colorful composition, full of art graffiti and things happening, to portray like the street was well occupied by the community. So I went to Google to find some amazing graffitis that I really appreciate. I wanted to include something from Cobra, he's quite mainstream now, but I felt that his style would really work with this composition. I also searched for places I visited and liked, for example like Eastside Gallery in Berlin that is amazing and the Batman's Alley in Sao Paulo. This step is all about creativity and composition. Now, to apply these graffitis and drawings properly, you've got to change the blend mode to overlay or multiply, whichever works best. And of course, match the existing perspective, Ctrl T to enter the transform box, and hold Ctrl to drag the nodes to where you want. After all the graffiti and art on the walls were done, I went ahead and added a colorful pattern on the floor, which really boosted up the mood of the scene. So guys, let me explain one thing. As you can see, I'm not going over all of the little details, and that's because I always do that on the tutorials. If you watch some previous videos, you will understand how things are done here in Photoshop. When the image is faster to do, I have much more time to go over and explain, but when I bring images that took a lot more time to do, I still want to make the video enjoyable for you. But basically, I use a workflow, a non-destructive workflow that was already mentioned a couple of times, and that's what I teach very carefully over the Photoshop course, 
and have explained in other videos as well. So I feel that I don't have to repeat the same steps over and over again, and I can focus on showing you the process, which in my opinion is what brings value to these videos. From all the steps on this image, I feel that inserting people is the easiest one. As always, place all of them with their heads lining up on the horizon line, with the exception of kids, of course, then correct values and colors, and most importantly, add shadows. As you can see, the shadows on the scene don't have hard edges, so pay attention to that when adding yours. If you'd like to know more about how to add shadows, I've got a dedicated video towards this topic. You should definitely check it out. I'm going to leave the link on the video description. Now, try to add people very distributed around the canvas. They play a major role in the composition aesthetic. Also, use them to indicate actions and how the space can and should be used. The last thing to do here is the top plane. A couple of ideas came up to my mind, all of them about hanging something between the two facades. For sure, if this was a night scene, I would make a light hanging line. I also thought about something like those streets that have colorful umbrellas hanging. Then I decided to hang some colorful fabric pieces to filter the sunlight. It was a quite tedious process and from all of the steps, this was the most lengthy one for sure. But to be honest, it was so worth it. It really gave a unique atmosphere to the street. You can do this by hand using a drawing tablet or also import some sort of texture that has the umbrellas or hanging fabric. But to get the perspective and the ambience right, I decided to do it myself using basically the pen tool and a mouse. Now to finish the image, as always I like to wrap things up, tie the image all together with the camera raw filter. If you wanted to add other types of filter, this would be the time as well, for example like grading on maps. And that's basically it. As you can see, we've come a long way since the raw Google Maps print screen, right? The final result turned out very differently from that dull looking alley. So if you guys enjoyed or learned something, don't forget to leave a like. Also, if you do something like this yourself in the future, please send them over my Instagram at old.graphics. I would love to see the before and after and share over my Insta stories. And again, don't forget to slow down the video if you need to see the exact steps and drop a comment below with your questions. And there's one last thing that I wanted to talk about, that here on YouTube Analytics, I have access to where my views are coming from, and I saw that over 60% of you are not subscribed yet. So by any means, if you somehow enjoyed the channel and have learned something over the past videos, don't forget to subscribe. That encourages me to keep creating these free YouTube videos for you. Alright, so that's it. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, I'll see you over the next video. Bye!